guys out of here. Get on the jet. Who are you? I work with Spider-Man. You work for Spider-Man? I work with Spider-Man, not for Spider-Man. New plan. Hello and welcome back to Disney Marvels for the week of June 30th, 2019. This is episode 49. Disney Marvels, the show about Disney, Marvel, Lucasfilms, Muppets, Pixar, Fox, the Parks, the Cruise Lines, and much, much more. If it has to do with Disney, it's fair game. I'm your host, Matthew Graken. Whether you're planning your next Disney Park vacation, cruise vacation, or you just don't know where to start and you're looking for some free, friendly advice, be sure to contact Destinations with Character Travel, the official travel partner of the Disney Marvel Podcast. Email them at info at destinationswithcharacter.com or visit their website, www.destinationswithcharacter.com and be sure to tell them that the Disney Marvel Podcast sent you. Now, to the news. Straight from Orlando Park News, the Walt Disney World Resort has announced that even more areas of Epcot will be closed later this year as part of the park's ongoing evolution. Mouse Gears, Club Cool, Pin Central, and Heritage Manor will be closed before the end of the year. Several of these offerings will, be, will continue to operate in a temporary locations while work takes place in the area's those areas of the park. Here's additional information about the future world, uh, the future of these locations. Art of Disney and Penn Central will be closed September 8th, 2019. The Camera Center and the Heritage Manor will close and return early next year with different products assortments from Penn Central and Art of Disney respectively. Mouse Gear will move to a temporary location while Cruise refurbish its current home. Club Cool will be incorporated into a new space in the near future. As a part of the largest transformation in the park's history, the Fount Foundation Fountain of Nations will close permanently September 8th, 2019. That right there, folks, that one for me is quite sad. I love the Fountain of Nations. As part of the exciting transformation of Epcot, Electric Umbrella, the quick serve restaurant location next to Innovations East, is scheduled to close this winter. New dining operations will, be, uh, will become available in the future, featuring a vast variety of food and beverage selections. We will find out more information come D23 in August. From the Disney blog, Fans can catch their friendly neighborhood spam Spider-Man fresh from his latest adventures during heroic encounter in Hollywoodland at Disney's California Adventure Park. Spidey is part of an epic lineup of heroes appearing in the park including Captain Marvel, Black Panther, and Dora Milaje from the Garden of the Galaxies, and Captain America as well. The thrilling new movie, Spider-Man Far From Home, arrives in theaters this week. Actually, today. As the day of recording it. Following the events of the Avengers Endgame, Spider-Man must set up a, a new uh, setup to take on new threats in the world that has changed forever. Now some extraordinary new merchandise inspired by Disney's all-new movie, The Lion King, the live action version arrives at Disney's Animal Kingdom. The Lion King inspired items include several new vibrant t shirts, a variety of colors, as well as special uh, apparel featuring Simba and Nala. Also, the items are now available at Mombasa's, the, uh, Mombasa's Marketplace, Island Merchantile, and Discovery Trading Company at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Also be on the lookout for new Lion King Funko Pops collections. Rafiki, Simba, Scar, Pumbaa, and Timon can be found at Disney's Animal Kingdom's location. 
at our local the lion king collection includes special items uh for your wrist as well from magic bands to alex and annie bracelets disney's lion king journeys to the african savannah where the future king must overcome betrayal and tragedy to assume his rightful place on pride rock the movie has the all-star cast including danny glover as simba beyonce knowles carter as nala james earl jones reprising his role as mufasa uh Chutel elijah for as scar seth rogan as pumba and billy Exer as timon utilizing pioneer filmmaking techniques to bring treasure characters to life in a whole new way disney's the lion king roars into theater on july 19th to this year 2019 walt disney television has announced two new initiatives designed to create opportunities for individuals from underprivileged backgrounds the ex, uh, ex executive incubator program which is intended to create pipelines for next generation network executives at the walt disney television studios intern program which will offer a career path for diverse talents behind, uh, b uh, from behind the camera. This, uh, this new program continues Disney's slash ABC's commitment to expand its diverse talent workforce and better reflect the audience it serves. And we will seek out talent, they will seek out talent and diverse and varied perspectives, including women, people of color, the LGBTQ plus community, military veterans, people with disabilities, and other aspiring to hold network executive roles and produce positive uh, positions across the Walt Disney Television Studios. As part of Walt Disney Television's writing program today, Disney Channel announced it has established the Anita, Anita T. Boone Comedy Writing Scholarship to provide dedicated funds to hire emerging and diverse writers who are pursuing careers in comedy writing for television. The scholarship honors the trailblazing writers and producers who was executive producer and showrunners of Disney Channel's comedy series Raven's Home when she passed away in March of 2019. Boone was creator and executive producer of comedy series One on One and its spin-off Cuts co-executive producer of My Wife and Kids, The Hughleys, co-producer on The Living Single, supervising producer on The Parenthood, the story editor slash consultant on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, just to name some of her many credits. On to rumors, the China Pavilion will be getting a new, China Pavilion in Epcot will be getting a new movie by 2021. We'll be back after this break. And now, on with the show. It's Independence Day weekend here in the United States. That means back air cookouts, barbecues, flag waving, fireworks, and some of the biggest movie blockbusters that Hollywood has to offer. And one such movie is Spider-Man Far From Home. Keeping with the home theme in the name, what did I think of this movie, you may be wondering. It is weird. It is weird to think this is the last movie of Phase 3 because you would think that would have been Endgame. But no, we have Far From Home, and it doesn't deal with the Infinity Saga per se. It just deals with the aftermath, which I think is something that Marvel, in its comic books, in its stories, and its movies, likes to do, likes to deal with, is the aftermath. Not only have you had this event happen, this is the outcome of that event. This is kind of the, the ripple effect of an event, in this case. Tony Stark so you kind of get the ripple effect of that but not just that you have what happened you know what was the other side of okay we had the heroes disappear but we know half the population of the earth disappeared as well what was their take on it 
Well, apparently in Homecoming, uh, Far From Home, I apologize. I'm probably going to do that a couple times during this. But apparently in Far From Home, we learn that the people of the world, or at least America, have named the snap. It's not the snap. We always called it the snap, but it wasn't a snap. To them, it's the blip. And it's not a spoiler. It, it just, this is a funny little thing. doesn't really have much to do with the plot. I will try and keep this, like most of my reviews, spoiler free. So you have the blip. And that all comes out right at the beginning. And you have people, talk, you have them talking about how has it affected everything? How has it changed the world? Um, one character talks about when they came back, their living place was different. Um, their, their apartment, something changed. Another character talks about how the people who didn't blip are now five years older but they're kind of in the same high school grade being that this is spider-man so they're in high school so you, you you have these weird it's created some kind of awkward moments for everybody and uh it, it's there's still an effect up from it but that's just one part of it so what else but they'll act one of the movie they like most movies, you could, you could break it into multiple acts. You have Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3, per se. This one you can even divide into Act 1 and Act 2. But Act 1, and um, there's three acts. There's definitely three acts. Act 1, for me, was slow. And personally, for me, it was really slow. Um, I started kind of... At, at moments, I was starting to second-guess where they were going with this movie and what was happening with it. But... It does kind of set things up. It's like, uh, yeah, like I said, you kind of have to piece together everything that happened, not just with Endgame, but Infinity War and Endgame, because it, really that's how it all happens. Like a lot of these characters, their stories paused during Infinity War and only came back towards the end of Endgame. So this is immediately after that, and people are still adjusting. Things are still kind of finding its way back to where they belong. Things have come a long way in cleaning everything up and, and fixing things. So, yes, you have to establish the link between the, the stories, and, and that's what Act 1 does. It may not answer all the questions, but it answers some of the questions. I mean, we don't need to, or the writers really don't want to get into, what happened to the people on the airplane? Those people in the helicopter that crashed into the side of the building. The people that were, <clears throat> you know, standing somewhere that doesn't exist anymore. So, things progress. Things are moving on. You, as I've seen the commercials, and the trailers, the advertisements, Happy and Aunt May, something's going on there. It's the, the elephant in the room that no one wants to acknowledge. But that's all kind of quick at the beginning. Once you get traveling things start really uh, coming together. Which strange is, because you see some of these scenes, and this is how Hollywood works. This is part of how Hollywood works. You see scenes in the trailer that, you know, Spider-Man interacting with the police or him with the, the passport. You have some of that, all that different type of stuff that never make it into this movie. And that's because while these trailers come out, they're still working on the movie. They, the movie isn't finished yet. They're still trying to put all the pieces together, or the puzzle, and taking pieces out that make the puzzle too big. So that's probably what happened. So I look forward to it on the, the Blu-ray. But So you, you get a sense of everything that's progressing. Um, you, you see him with his multiple suits. He's in, And kind of that... And we've gotten this before in some of the previous Spider-Man movies which I'll touch on later, but the um, kind of Peter Parker's sense of wanting to be Peter Parker, not Spider-Man, that he wants to have that dual life, unlike Iron Man, that Iron Man is Iron Man either way. He, he wants the Iron Man persona and the Tony Stark persona one in the same, more or less. Spider-Man doesn't want that. To, um, Peter Parker doesn't want that. He wants Peter Parker to be Peter Parker, Spider-Man to be Spider-Man, and live their separate lives and just to be separate. 
and you get that struggle at the beginning that I'm Peter Parker I don't want to be walking around as Spider-Man I'm not the next Tony Stark I am not the next head of the Avengers I I I just want to be a teenage high school kid which Peter Parker is Spider-Man to the public is not Spider-Man's a hero Spider-Man saves the world Spider-Man helped defeat Thanos and not realizing it's a teenage boy under that mask and you kind of get how that is affecting him how all this hero stuff sometimes can be too much to handle can be overwhelming as much as people want this celebrity who wants the recognition sometimes it's nice in in small doses but when you start getting all the time when you get too much of it is it still quite as nice and that is something that the first act also deals with besides the lips blip and besides happy and aunt may you get that it's almost like Spider-Man's being awkward, but when you think about it, and, and this is, I thought it was strange at first when I was watching the movie. Now that I'm looking back, I, I realize it a little more that the reason why he was so awkward was, again, he's just a teenage boy in high school. This is not, not that he signed up for any of this, but this isn't what he wants to do. He wants to go out and help save the world it's not bad guys just he wants to be your friendly neighborhood spider-man just someone from you know from the neighborhood you go otherwise you know go around in his mets t-shirt and and you know look at pretty girls and you know try to ask him out on a date and you know play legos with his friends you know the, the hero stuff is nice but it's not it's not completely him. It's not what defines Peter Parker as Peter Parker. So they, they, they did touch on that at the beginning of this movie, which, again, slow the beginning of the movie down. But if you want a slow part of the movie, don't you want it to be the beginning? Because from there, you go down, you know, the roller coaster, the slowest part of a roller coaster is the beginning when you're going uphill. And it really comes to a slow point just before you drop. And this, once, like I said, once they get out of the United States, once the trip actually begins, yeah, they go to Italy and something happens and the bad guys start showing up. And this is where it starts picking up. Mysterio is introduced. The elementals are introduced and Nick Fury is introduced or shows up. And just like in the, the previews, you know, it's like, you know, I've been trying to get a hold of you, says Nick Fury. And Peter Parker's like, oh, you have. Um, and Samuel L. Jackson just kills the lines as always. He just, you know, hits them out of the park with his, his you know, his little jabs and uh, comments. Works great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> makes reference to the funeral he goes to Spider-Man you know I, I saw you at the funeral but I didn't think that was a good time to exchange numbers and it, again just fun it just it's funny it works it's good so it's you know you have the elementals how are is Nick Fury gonna combat the elementals you got Spider-Man just happens to be in the right location coincidence no, nothing's a coincidence with Nick Fury. And this, like I said, this is the second act. Things start building up. You progress. This is my fa son's favorite parts was whenever Spider-Man's battling the monsters. And you, again, you have Peter Parker trying to stay his independent Peter Parker part because he has this whole plan for this vacation. Him, you know, him and MJ are going to be traveling Europe with a half dozen of their closest friends and two teachers. But that you have that relation, you know, it's Peter Parker. I, I want to get close to MJ. I, I really like her, and I, I really want to start building this relationship with her. In what better way to do it on a class trip in Europe? And, of course, that can't go as, as smoothly as he wants. And that's fine, because it just adds more to it. Um, some characters may seem a little redundant, but 
the, the add in points. Mysterio um, is a well well written character. Um, multiple layers in how the whole thing works out. He, Jake Gyllenhaal, fantastic job in the suit, and you you just really portrays well. And everything is explained in a logical, scientific way. Um, it, it, there there is reasonings and ways that certain things are happening, and the way I think the writers did was a good job. It makes perfect sense. This works out. This makes sense why this is happening. How this is happening makes perfect sense. Um, and if you know the character of Mysterio, I think this is a nice marriage between the MCU and the, and the comic book versions of Mysterio. Um, where Mysterio is more of a... Uh, he was a magician, wasn't he? Some sort of circus performer. And... That's kind of how he develops his craft and his powers. So, let's switch it up, make it a little more modern, let's bring the times forward, and... Again, no spoilers, I, I think it makes sense. So, how everything, how everything works out. My favorite parts came a little bit later in the movie where... You really have a psycholo not psychological, was it psychological, but a virtual battle uh, between one of the the main the main villain and uh, Spider Man, and it plays out nicely. Um, it makes Spider Man guess the whole time what's going on, what is real, what is actually happening. Um, you know now that. You know, he's been introduced to this whole multiverse thing. Things start questioning. You know, so Spider-Man starts questioning things. And something that, in my wife pointed this out, something you get in this movie that you didn't get so much in the previous movie, I want to say you probably really haven't fully gone in, in a Spider-Man movie. Maybe the Andrew Garfield ones. Um, I don't think you got enough of it in the Tobey Maguire ones. Was how smart Spider-Man or, or Peter Parker how smart Peter Parker actually is, and you do get glimpses at this with um, the when Peter Parker is introduced to the idea of a multiverse, and just his mind just explodes on that. Oh well, that means this, or how about this and this and that, and then and he starts kind of geeking out on that. And there's another scene wherever he is handed some. Uh, Stark Tech. A couple scenes he gets some Stark Tech. But there's one scene in particular he gets some Stark Tech. Uh, you've seen this in the ad, so it, it's what he has to... <clears throat> or they put it out there, so I'm going to say this is not a spoiler, but he gets... Um, he's in the back of one of Tony's jets, and there's a uh, suit creator. So he starts creating his new Spider-Man suit. Why? Well, he doesn't have his other one. Why? Because it's probably in another, it's in another country or something. Or may not exist anymore. You know, he, he's traveling in Europe. He didn't even want to bring a suit. Aunt May packed a suit, and, you know, just because he's somewhere doesn't mean his luggage came with him. Happens to many people. You go from one country to the next, and your luggage goes somewhere else. So, he's creating this uniform, and it doesn't take him long to figure out how to do this. And you just see him, okay, this is how this works. This is how this works. This is what I need to do. And it, it's you know you you see the Peter Parker who is at home with technology who is at home with being creative and science you know, other than just being you know, in a school for science and with a really weird weird teachers JB Smooth JB Smooth was one of my favorite supporting characters in this movie as weird as that may sound he as the history teacher was i think phenomenal he was he played perfectly off the the um, other teacher who was running the debate teacher uh from the first movie he, back in this one and they played very well off each other and just kind of adults out of their elements with these bunch of teenagers on a class trip to europe where things aren't going how they 
thought they would go or just they don't understand why things are happening the way they are happening. Granted, they don't know Nick Fury's running the whole show. It just he plays it out he just plays it well and just certain things that he just says times his lines great. He, you know, he just pops up on the screen, hits a line and kind of thank you very much bows out. He does a great job. Um so he, he, I enjoyed him. Scrolls, yes, there is a throwaway line, throwaway line about the scrolls in this movie. Make sure you pay attention to it because I am certain, I am certain that will be coming back. That line will be is not a throwaway line, throwaway line. It is Marvel setting things up, going, yes, this is what's going to be happening because. Two, three movies, maybe the next movie, who knows, down the line, we're going to go, ah, yes, that was in Spider-Man. This, you know, wow, this is now, okay, that's what's going on. This is what's, oh, maybe this is, no. It's like that progressive commercial. Are you kidding me? I would never. First of all, and yes, that's what this line is going to do. I am certain about it because it, this movie has two one mid credit roll and one post credit scene. So two after after the movie's over scenes. The first one, you definitely go, what the And so that's that it definitely has something like that. Um, you bring back a character that has been missing from Spider Man for quite some time and plays up perfectly. It, it just you're astonished you're you're happy to see him. But when the bombshell hits, and I believe me, it is a bombshell. You just start, you can't believe what just happened. And your jaw, almost like it hit the floor, like mine did. Um, beautiful scenes. And then it just kind of pulls the rug out from under you. After all the credits are done, there is another scene. Make sure you see this scene because, again... It is setting things up. You know, you don't want this whole, you know, people are tired of the whole connected uh, multiverse thing. Uh, not the multiverse, thing, but the connected tissue between the movies. There's going to be connective tissues between the movies. Is there going to be a 20 movie story arc? They're saying no, but we shall see. Marvel, I'm again, my trust is in Marvel. They know what they're doing. You don't go for 10 plus years with a blockbuster after blockbuster movie and not have a somewhat idea of what you're doing. So that final post credit scene really sets up for things to come. And I've, I've, you know, I've mentioned before about how they're now, it's not going to be phases, but it's going to be divided between Earth and space. This kind of sets that theory up. And I won't say any more about it, but you just make sure you see it. Um, bring, they bring back a lot of great characters in this movie. And um, it's nice to see him for the parts that we see him at. So, yeah, that's that's kind of my take on the movie. I really enjoyed it. it. Started off slow. Yes, I was questioning it. I'm sorry I did that because once the you know you hit the ground running and the pieces start coming together, it, it plays out really, really well. Um, there's a purpose for everything. There's a lot of nice little humorous points. And it's it, it, it as my again going quoting my wife, she's not a fan of sequels. She liked Tobey Maguire's first Spider Man, didn't care for two or three. And you know what? I don't blame her on some of that. Again, like the, she liked the first Amazing Spider Man with Andrew Garfield, didn't care for the second one. Not a lot of people did. I understand that. So whenever you, this is your third time around doing a Spider Man sequel. Most people are going to go, and, uh, are, do we really want to do this again? Because two times before, you trick me once, shame on you. Trick me twice, shame on me. Trick me three times, shame on everybody. But not this case. In this case, they know how to do a Spider-Man sequel. This time it worked out. And good for them. Good for Sony. Better yet, good for Marvel, because they're the ones calling the show. And it, it is obvious. Um, everything plays out well. 
uh, big adventure, a lot of things happening, and some really nice acting, some really nice moments. So, but let me go a little Stephen A. Smith out over here, though, and I, I apologize, this is not my usual take, but for the people that just hate Tom Holland for being Tom Holland, you know, being picked to t take this role, you know, again, Tobey Maguire. All right. You know what? He started this whole thing off. He was good in the first one. The second, the third ones. You know what? I personally was not... I don't see... He did good as Spider-Man. I don't see him as Peter Parker. His his acting style did not lead to a Peter Parker. And it just kept on getting dark. It just... It, for the time, it worked out okay. But we've our superhero movies have grown so much more than that. And Andrew Garfield... Again, he did what he could with the role, but it, as the roles, as the movies progressed, it wasn't, both of them, too old. They, I'm sorry, I'm not judging by age, but they, they were not casted at the right point in their lives. Where Tom Holland started this role in his teenage years, what, 19, now he's 22, something like that. And he still likes, looks like he's 12. He, he's he got the nerdiness. He, he's he got the physique and uh, chops for Spider-Man. He plays it off well. He I think he plays both parts off well. And he just... He fits both parts of the puzzle. He fits Spider-Man. He fits Peter Parker. He does have both ends of it. And you know what? The other part of it, this whole thing is... Marvel's actually involved in these movies. Before, Marvel wasn't involved. Their name was attached to it, but that was the extent of it. They really did not help develop the story. They did really... Sony has proven that they do not know how to write a Spider-Man movie. They've had five tries. And their success rate with those five tries isn't that great. These two tries is Marvel's control, more in the reins. More at the wheel, controlling these Spider-Man movies. And that's how it works out better. And it's not, don't blame Tom Holland if you just are bitter about that Sam Raimi's not making Spider-Man movies anymore. He had his three tries. And I think for there was supposed to be the fourth one, and Sony just bailed out on it. Everything happens for a reason. You've heard me say that before. Everything happens for a reason. I think we're at the point where we need to be with Spider-Man. Enough about a gripe. I'm sorry about that, everyone. I enjoyed the movie. I'm sure you're going to enjoy the movie. If you like the MCU movies, if you liked Homecoming, if you enjoyed Spider-Man in Infinity War and Endgame, you are going to enjoy Spider-Man in this because it does move the character forward. It does progress some things. And by the end of it, especially if you stay around for those two scenes, you are going to be wondering what's next i can't wait for what's next because i can't believe what they just did have you seen spider-man yet have you seen homecoming uh far from home told you i was going to keep doing that have you seen far from home let me know what you think put it out there on the social facebook.com slash disney marvels podcast again you can join the conversation over at facebook.com slash disney marvels podcast love to hear your take on this movie and i post other things and news on there and have discussions um, or Twitter. Twitter works too, at Disney Marvels. Again, the Twitter account, if you're on the Twitter, is at Disney Marvels. Don't forget the S in both of those. You also can email the show with your suggestions or answers to DisneyMarvels at gmail.com. One more time, the email address is DisneyMarvels at gmail.com. You can also leave a voice message through the Anchor app or our website. I want to thank you for your time. I know how little time we all have these days with the holidays, the summer, the craziness. The kids are home. The kids aren't home. We have to run here. We have to go there. Just how difficult. So taking a little bit of time, listening in your car, listening before you go to bed, wherever you listen to the show, it means a lot to me. And, you know, I, I so much appreciate it. I so much thank you for taking that time, that little time that you have, and spending it with me. Um, it means a lot. 
if I could just ask you for this little favor, go online, go to iTunes, go to Stitcher, wherever, you know, um, to Anchor. Give the show a little bit of a rating. Get, you know, please leave a rating. Helps the show out. The more people we get involved in the show, the better. Tell your friends. Tell your Disney friends. Anyone involved in, um, you know, again, Marvel, Star Wars, Disney. Let them know about the show because the more people in the community, the better. That's what you know, Walt Disney was all about, families. In the aspect of Disney's family, not just his his direct family, but his company's family, that anyone involved with Disney, his fan, the fans of Disney were part of his family, and that's the same thing with this show. It's not the Disney podcast for no reason because we are all family. So let them know. The more, the merrier. And don't forget to subscribe to the show. Um, so this way you know when new episodes come out and are posted, you'll find out immediately. And while you're at it, consider becoming a premium subscriber to the show. You can do that over at anchor.fm slash disneymarvels slash support. Again, to become a premium subscriber, go to anchor.fm slash disneymarvels slash support. Remember, this show is brought to you by listeners like you. And your next vacation, or even your vacation for this year, Go over to Destinations with Character Travel. They will help you get to wherever you want to go. And the best way to do it, cheapest way, they mostly expensive, they will take care of the headaches. They are a Disney earmark agency. They're specializing in Disney cruise, resort vacations, destinations um, by Disney. They will take care of it all. So Destinations with Character, free quotes, What's better than free to start off your vacation? You're going to be paying for everything else. Start off with something free. And let someone else take care of the headache for you. You can email them at info at destinationswithcharacter.com or visit their website, www.destinationswithcharacter.com. Again, the email address is info at destinationswithcharacter.com or the website, www.destinationswithcharacter.com. Destinations with Character Travel, making dream vacations come true every single day. And it's time for your dream vacation to come true. Whatever you're facing out there, no matter how difficult, how dark, how impossible, how bleak things may seem right now, don't give up. Look deep within inside yourself. You can find the strength. You can find the light. You can find what you need to overcome this obstacle. Because you are worth it. And you can get through this. Be your own hero. Never give up. Never give in. Never think you are not worth it. Because you are. And I like to end this show with a quote from Walt Disney. And for Independence Day, I picked one up for kind of somewhat appropriate. And it is. Actually, if you could see closed in my eyes... The American flag is waving in both of them. And up in my spine, up my spine is gro- growing the red, white, and blue stripes. That's from Walt Disney. Happy Independence Day, everyone. And I hope you have a good week. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>